In this video, I'm going to take you through the steps that I use to recover NODB tables from a MySQL installation. In my case, I had an installation not save a backup of my jobs or not transfer them over, and that led to a disconnection of all my tables. The key thing to note about this process is that this won't help you if you've had complete data loss. The one key factor here is that we did retain our data folder. And so that's where we're going to start. So first step, I want to go into my target system. That is, in my case, where I both lost data and where I want to repair it to. I'm going to select the data directory. We can do so with this SQL command right here. It's going to give me a path that's similar to this. And if I look at that path, you can see that it is a sim link to the most recent installation of MySQL. In my case, I don't want this 0.28, I want the 0.21. This is where my old installation is. And if I look at the structure of this, you can see that the data folder contains folders that have the same name as your databases. And then within each one of those, you're going to have your uh, files that represent each table in the system. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take the table or tables that we want to restore and we're going to move them into our scratch system. So for my scratch system, I have a, a, a Ubuntu 64-bit system that has MySQL installed and it is in no way, shape or form anything but a machine that I can use for this process. So we don't care about logins or permissions, we just want a clean system that has MySQL on there. The last thing I want to do in preparation for this, and this is going to be where one of the big and sort of unfortunate um, issues might be, depending on how you lost your data, is I do want to have a, a DDL description of the table in question. Now, in my particular case, I had more data loss, which meant, uh, which means to say that I actually had backups of my database structure and some data, I just didn't have the most recent data. And so that means that I can very quickly and easily go into the table I want, in this case, FB reports, and I could just copy out my description language for this. I'm just gonna paste it here quick, which we'll use in just a moment. If you don't actually have the document description, I'll talk about a possible workaround in just a second. But for us, the first and most important step is to move this file into the location that we're gonna use as our staging ground. Make sure you get rid of some of the old files here and let's just move that file over. So FB reports is gonna go into the documents folder of my scratch system. So at this point, we're ready to go into the command line. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just note here that I'm a root user in Ubuntu right now. If you've never done that before, it's just sudo dash i and you just type in your password. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my SQL. So because I'm the root user and because I don't have a password on the root user, I just log straight in. And again, this is why I'm a super user is I don't care about anything other than this simple process. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is just as we did on the target system, I'm going to run my data directory command. And you can see here that my data on this system lives in varlib mysql, which is why I have a terminal window open here. If I ls in this, you can see that this is the standard set of files that you get from mysql. Let's go ahead and create a database called recforms. And really what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, as closely as I can, recreate the database structure that I lost. So now you'll notice I have a folder called Rack Forms. I can actually go into this folder and then see that it's empty right now. So now that we have a database, we're gonna to switch to using that database. And I'm gonna copy over this create script that we talked about before, so I generate that table. If I perform this, you'll notice that I have an fbreports.ibd, and look at that, the file we moved in is the same name, fbreports.ibd. Now, the potential workaround here is if you don't have your DDL uh, items like we have right here, you can download this tool and then visit this website for a description of how it works. There's also a readme in this tool. But effectively what you're going to do is run this tool and point it at one of your IBD files, the one that you want to restore, of course, and it's gonna give you a representation of what that table is. In other words, it'll have your table name, it'll have the fields, the types, and other various properties. 
And what you'll have to do is you'll have to translate that output of that program into a simple script like this right here. Could be a slightly painful process if you don't have um, uh, sort of experience doing that before. And there may be tools that do it for you. I just haven't found any, uh, certainly that are free. And so this is sort of like our next best option. But when we have our table then, again, you'll notice that I have a record in the uh, folder and I have my MySQL prompt. So the next thing that we wanna do is take a quick survey of what this file's permissions and group and ownership are. So you'll notice it has very tight permissions and it's owned by MySQL. So here's where the magic happens. First thing I'm gonna run is this script right here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna detach this table uh, from the NODB system. And you'll actually notice if I ls again, it's blank in here. And that's okay because what we want to do is we wanna copy in now sort of stealthily our new file. So I'm going to copy that file into this location. However, now, if I do an LSL, and this is incredibly important, you'll notice that the file has the same permissions, but it's owned by a different user and its group is a different user. So we're going to change that. So we're going to change the group of that file to MySQL, and we're gonna do the same with its ownership. So change owner. And now we have a file that to MySQL is the exact same thing that we had previously in terms of permissions. We're gonna go back to MySQL and we're gonna run our second magic incantation, which is we're going to relink that table space. Let me go ahead and make sure there's a space here and query okay. So at this point, I can select star from FB reports and we should have data in here. So this is exactly what we want to see. At this point then, we're going to export our data so we can import it into our target system. And we're gonna use MySQL dump to do that. Go ahead and paste that in. The format of this is pretty simple. MySQL dump, the user is root, no password, as we'll see in a second. We put in the target database, we put in the target table, and then we wanna put in a target SQL script. Critical to this process is make the name of the SQL script the same as what your table name is. It's gonna make the import process a little bit smoother. And just to be a little bit smoother about this, instead of writing it to this folder, I'm actually gonna write it to home, Gerdinic documents. No password and run this. If I go to my documents folder, you'll see now that I have this reports.sql. I'm obviously moving this off of the system, so I don't need to change its permissions, but I certainly could if I wanted to. I could copy this over, and we could say change ownership to my user for that file. Notice it opens it up, but again, we're moving it, so it doesn't really matter. Now, move this file to your target system. And because this is just a standard SQL file, all we really need to do is just find a tool that allows us to import it into the target system. For my personal preferences, I like to use MySQL Workbench because it has a nice data import and restore tool. I'm gonna go ahead and select the contained file option. I'll select the file. I'll make sure to select the target schema and I'll start the import process. You can see here that it's finished. And I should say that in all the tables that I've done this to, which is about uh, 10 or 15 already, I haven't had a single failure so far. This just generates standard SQL that imports beautifully into the system. Um, at this point then, if I go into my table, what was once empty now contains some records in here. So all is well. So that's pretty much it. Again, the two big callouts that I make here throughout this process is, again, this won't unfortunately help us if you had total data loss, but as long as you had your data folder that contained these uh, basic files, you should be able to get in there and uh, perform the steps that we had. And then finally, I'd also call out that the process of changing the ownership in user is really, really important. This kind of failed every time I did this if I didn't do this. So it's really important to make sure that these files are sort of the exact same when we perform our little, um, our little swap routine. But as long as you do that, you should be good. So questions, comments, please leave them down below. I uh, would we'll love to help you out.